Hi everyone, my name is Violet Reed. I am the Executive Director of NEVO, the Mawa Environmental Volunteers Organization. And today I am at our Fresh Roots Farm on a beautifully sunny but also very cold day to show you how to make tea from white pine needles. It's really simple, you don't need a lot of tools, and I'm going to walk through how to identify white pine, how to harvest it, and then of course how to make the tea. So before we go out and find a white pine tree and harvest it, I am going to show you a few of the tools and items you'll need in order to make the tea. It's really simple. A lot of the things that I'm showing you can be swapped out for other variations of things you'll more readily have in your kitchen. But today I'll be using about 32 ounces of water. Um, I have a little more here just in case I need it for anything. Some kind of strainer. You could use a cheesecloth or any type of cloth you have lying around. I'm going to be using scissors, but you can use a knife or garden shears or pruners to harvest your white pine. And then a pot. So if you're ready, we're going to go out and find a white pine tree and learn how to harvest it and identify it. And then we're going to come back and make the tea. So I'm here at the end of the Fresh Roots Farm field. I'm right along the perimeter. And here we're lucky enough to have a small stand of Eastern white pine. Eastern white pine goes by the Latin name Pinus strobus. It's part of the Pineaceae family. And you're going to find Pinus strobus ranging all up and down the northeastern coast of the states, heading up into Canada, and then settling as far as its range goes along the southern border of Canada. You're not going to find it too much um, in the south of the states, on the southeast coast. It really dwells more on the northeast coast and it tends to like colder climates. So where are you going to find white pine near you if you are not familiar with white pine and you don't really know where to start? Think about areas that are damper and shadier and have well-drained soil. That's your best bet for pine finding a few eastern white pine trees or a stand of them. So at the Fresh Roots Farm is a perfect example. Right now it's hard to tell. Is it shady? Woo! Let's keep on falling. Is it shady? Is it damp who knows in the winter time but if you were here in the springtime you would see that this area of the farm is significantly shadier than the rest and that is where our pinus strobus like to hang out so now let's really dive into identifying pinus strobus um, we know where you may find it near you and so let's really look at a more micro view of the eastern white pine to make sure that you are comfortable identifying it so I am here, there's a few eastern white pine right near me, there's a branch right above me, if you can see it. And how do you know? Let's start at looking at the bark. So the bark of a young pine astrobus is going to be smooth and gray. However, near us, our pine astrobus are quite a few years old. These are trees that can live for a really long time. Um, and so as the trees get older, their bark is going to get scaly. So if you can get a like, close up, it's going to be less gray and a little bit more of a darker brown with lighter brown in between the scales. I like to think of a dragon, so scaly, dragony. In addition, it's going to grow pretty tall. It can grow up to 80 feet. Um, so when you're looking for Pinus strobus, there's a lot of trees in the Pineaceae family. There's quite a few in our area. So think about a really tall tree, scaly bark. And then when you come to look at the needles, of course they're going to be green. They're going to be more greenish blue. And I'm going to take a clump of these needles and show you um, another identifying feature about them. So here I have three different representations of the pine astrobus needle for you. So I have needles on the branch. This is a branch that fell off the tree I found on the ground. Then we have bundles, which make up the tip of the branch, or what we call fascicles. And then in every fascicle, you're going to have five needles. And the needles on pine astrobus are going to be anywhere from three to five inches long. And my camera doesn't have uh, the depth or quality to it to show you, but each needle is going to have three faces. So it's going to be a three-sided needle. These needles are generally bluish green. And let's go back to the point that in every bundle, in every fascicle, you're going to have five needles. So if you really want to determine 
Okay, is this kind of strobus? You want to go through a branch, a low-hanging branch, and just count and see if you can find um, many instances of each fascicle having five needles. And sometimes you're going to find that, you know, you may have three needles, you may have four needles, that's okay. You just want to find most commonly that the bundles have five needles. So I'm going to show you how to harvest pine astrobus or needles from the eastern white pine just here with this branch just so it's a little bit easier for you to see um, since it's so cold and windy outside. Something to note is that you always want to get the needle straight from the tree. That's when it's freshest, when it's going to be most potent. It's okay, you can use needles from a branch in the ground. You want to make sure that they're still mostly green. That will tell you that the branch probably fell recently. If you start to see yellowing, and I don't know if you can see here, but maybe you can a little bit. If you start to see yellowing on the tip, that means the branches are probably a bit older, or excuse me, the needles. And you might want to buy for just harvesting straight off the tree. You might as well. It's right there. You can harvest pine astrobus needles throughout the whole year. So they're always going to be fresh. They're always going to be green. In the springtime, you'll see bright green tips um, coming off of the branches and in between the needles of pine astrobus, those are spring chips. You can also harvest them. They're going to taste a little bit more sour, but still have a pleasant taste. So when I'm high harvesting pine astrobus, I'll use a knife or scissors. Today I'm using scissors. And I'll just go straight along and just clip. I'll just clip the little branches right off with the fascicles and the bundles right on them. Okay, so I'm just going to clip all these. And today for the tea, I'm going for two ounces or a really nice handful. Um, these are not the needles I'm going to use since we have a tree so close to us that I can harvest from. I'm going to harvest fresh, but for representation, if you don't want to use a scale or you just want to eye it, that's fine. I would say this plus I'm going to get a few more bundles because I like a really potent tea. So I'm just going to clip it right here. And let me show you. So a handful like this will definitely do it. And again, I'm going for a hearty two ounces plus, a little bit more. This is going to go into 32 ounces of water and it's going to make about four cups of tea for everyone. So when you're harvesting, even if you don't want the branches, just harvest the little twigs with it. It just makes it a cleaner, more complete harvest. Um, and then afterwards, if you don't want to use the branch part of the pine astrobus, that's okay. We're going to talk through the benefits of using it, but you won't miss out on too much if you don't. One final note on identifying and harvesting pine astrobus is that while almost all of the trees in the Pineaceae family um, are safe to harvest and consume from, there are a few what we call lookalikes that you should watch out for when you're going out to harvest. And the lookalikes that are mentioned that some people may confuse with pine astrobus are the yew tree and the Norfolk Island pine. And to be honest, they really don't look anything like pine astrobus. They have very stout needles. So this is pine astrobus still, and pine astrobus has long needles, three to five inches. They're growing in bundles or fascicles. The yew tree and the Norfolk Island pine, the trees are generally stouter. The leaves are flat. They're not growing in fascicles. They're pretty short, usually like this long, and they look more akin to a common Christmas tree. However, it's always good to know some of the lookalikes that could trip you up when you're going out to harvest. And I just want you to be aware um, of that as you go out to get your pine astrobus needles. So why white pine? Why am I out here in the cold, in the wind, talking to you about how to make white pine tea besides the fact that it will be delicious? I am talking to you about white pine because besides its culinary attributes, which we're going to talk about today, it has quite a few medicinal aspects as well. And I just want to know that I am not an expert in white pine or herbalism or foraging. I am a plant enthusiast. I love learning about plants and I love sharing what I've learned with others. So everything I tell you, you're just going to want to do your own research as well. So you're really secure in your knowledge about white pine and going forward and making the tea. 
so white pine is high in vitamin C. It has vitamin C year round, but its vitamin C content is highest in the spring when its spring tips are forming. Those light green tips, and they're going to be a little bit sour. White pine also contains vitamin A. It's anti-inflammatory. It is antimicrobial. It can help relieve symptoms of congestion or sinus pressure or sinus issues. So pressure might be one of them. It also can help with any respiratory ailments. So it's not going to be a cure-all, but can it, it can aid in relieving your symptoms and helping you to get on the path of healing and recovery. White pine has terpenes and its needles and terpenes are part of a plant's secondary characteristics so they help to give the plant or many plants um, its characteristic odor and taste so lavender has terpenes in it um, and it also has antioxidants through the tannins in its bark so if you choose to use the bark you may get a little bit of antioxidants through the tannins tannins if you're not familiar are chemical compounds as well as terpenes are also chemical compounds and tannins will color your tea if you choose to use the bark a little bit darker so if you're using the parts of the pine needle bundles that we cut off that have some bark so on the twig part um, your tea may turn out just a little bit darker I would call it more of like an amber color usually um, and other than that white pine is also refreshing it has a slightly cleansing um, effect to it so thinking about all the times you've encountered pine in your life through pine saw or a candle or a christmas tree in your house a walk in the woods you may feel a bit refreshed after you take a deep breath around pine or pine scented things and that's because it does have that mildly cleansing effect if you go online and you look about up, um, you know, medical uh, attributes of white pine, you're going to find a list a lot longer than that. And it should be noted that not all aspects of the medicinal qualities of white pine have been studied thoroughly. A lot of this is through experience by herbalists and people who have enjoyed taking white pine for certain ailments. But you want to take everything with a little bit of a grain of salt until you have consumed white pine for yourself and seen the results. So now that we've talked about white pine and its characteristics and where to find its medicinal uses, let's get to making the tea. And I'm going to head up top to the farm and to show you briefly how to make it. Okay, so now we are going to make the tea. I have already started to make mine. I'm going to boil the tea off camera in a, in a sheltered place because doing it outdoors on the camp stove, it keeps on blowing out because of the wind. So I'll show you the afterward effects. But basically what I'm doing to make the tea is I'm putting 32 ounces of water into a pot. And then I'm going to take my needles and I recommend that you chop them up or cut them up really roughly, nothing crazy. Um, when you chop them up or cut them up, you're exposing more surface area um, to the water that so the properties can be extracted more easily from the plant and you get more of an oomph in your tea, both as far as taste and smell and you know the medicinal qualities that come with white pine. So I did already, I already started. So I have my pot right here and I already roughly chopped up uh, my needles, nothing crazy. As you can see, I did include the bark in there. Um, I do want to get some of the effects that the tannins can bring. And if you want, you can also take a knife before you cut up your needles and just score it a little bit. Just make some cuts and that will allow the properties in the bark to be released more easily. Similar to the effects that happen when you cut your needles, cut them up. And again, I have about two ounces or a large handful of pine needles cut up in here. And what I'm going to do is put on the stove, bring it to the first boil. So bring it just when it starts to boil, shut the heat off, and then let the needle steep in the water with the lid on for around 20 minutes. Um, and you want to keep the lid on because it will help to contain those essential oils because they're the first to go when things start evaporating um, in your teas or your, yeah, any of your medicinal teas basically. Something else I want to note is that if you want a really strong, a more medicinal tea, maybe you are taking this because you're feeling a little ill, you have congestion, you have some sinus issues, you're feeling some kind of respiratory illness coming on, you may want to make an infusion. An infusion is basically a very strong herbal medicinal tea. So I did prepare an infusion for you all today, but uh, I left it outside and it's rock solid. Um, or maybe not quite, it's close to the rock solid. Um, and so a lot of the extraction process has stopped. 
However, we were well on its way. I did it this more early this morning. So you can start to see that it's starting to color a little bit more amber. Eventually, once it's done infusing, it will be a rich, ambery, golden brown color. Um, and for pine needles, sometimes when I'm making a pine infusion, I will infuse overnight. But if I'm doing it during the daytime, I'll do it from anywhere between six and eight hours. This is an infusion and in 18 ounce jar and so to 18 ounces I put uh, two ounces of pine needles uh, if I was going to do a large infusion say 32 ounces um, maybe I would do three or four ounces of pine needles because um, you're really just looking for a powerful punch you're looking for a powerful punch in your infusion you want to get a lot of those medicinal effects from it and finally, something I want to note is that there's a difference between using fresh and dry plant material. So pine needles kind of walk the line because they're always seem to be very dry. Um, and since they're always available year round, there's really no need to store them unless you're traveling to a place where you don't have pine needles. So generally I'll just harvest fresh. Um, and when you're using fresh plant material, you use four times the amount of fresh material than you do dry. So if a recipe calls for one ounce of plant material, you're going to want to use four. The pine needles, I just act as if they are dry because they are dry even if they're fresh. Um, and so in this recipe, say it would call for half an ounce of pine, um, pine needles fresh. I'm just going to use two ounces and I'm just going to times that by four because the pine needles are already dry and I like my tea, tea quite strong. So with that being said, I'm going to get out of the wind and I'm going to boil my tea and then I will show it to you when it's done and when I strain it. The difference between using fresh and dry plant material. So pine needles kind of walk the line because they're always seem to be very dry. Um, and since they're always available year round, there's really no need to store them unless you're traveling to a place where you don't have pine needles. So generally I'll just harvest fresh. Um, and when you're using fresh plant material, you use four times the amount of fresh material than you do dry. So if a recipe calls for one ounce of plant material, you're going to want to use four. With pine needles, I just act as if they are dry because they are dry even if they're fresh. Um, and so in this recipe, say it would call for half an ounce of pine, um, pine needles fresh. I'm just going to use two ounces and I'm just going to times that by four because the pine needles are already dry and I like my tea, tea quite strong. So with that being said, I'm going to get out of the wind and I'm going to boil my tea and then I will show it to you when it's done and when I strain it. So I am in our carport. This is where I was boiling our tea. It's done. It's been steeping for around 20 minutes. Um, and as with all teas, you can let it go for a little bit longer or a little bit more than the recommended time. Um, it just depends on the flavors and the strength of the tea that you want and the color. So for example, with a black tea bag, you may know the longer you leave the bag in, the stronger the color is and the taste of your tea is going to be. For our tea, 20 minutes is fine with me. The tea is going to take on a bit of an ambery color. It's going to start to get a little ambery, a little goldeny brown. Um, and of course, the color will strengthen the longer you let it steep. So with an infusion, it will be quite darker and more ambery than the tea I'm going to show you. So I'm just going to turn around the camera um, and I'm going to show you what it looks like in the pot. And then I'll show you what it looks like when it's strained and the plant material is out of the way. Okay, so here is my finished tea in the pot. Maybe a little hard to see um, because of the steam coming out of it. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just strain it into a cup. So for me, I'm just using a single little tea strainer right here, right into my mug. Um, and then you'll get a better look at what the color is going to be. Okay. So here is the final product. Again, it is like a lighter color. It kind of looks like vegetable broth, but it certainly doesn't taste like that. It tastes really piney and delicious. Yeah, it just smells like a Christmas tree in a cup. And the best thing about it is that it's coming right from your backyard. So, or someone else's backyard. Um, so let me give it a taste. 
yeah it's beautiful it isn't as sharp as you'd expect it to be because the smell pine is so sharp it's a little rounder um and even a bit sweet and once you become comfortable with using white pine you can start mixing in other herbs and other plants here with our interns um, we've made white pine and sage tea which has been really nice you can play around with white pine and adding in different herbs different flowers um, it all depends on your taste preference and what you're looking for um, different spices potentially like clove and cinnamon you could make a really Christmassy tea but it's all up to you so I hope that you are excited to make tea out of eastern white pine if you have any questions you can ask them in the comments below and I'll be sure to get back to you and I am wishing you a warm and cozy winter and i hope to see you guys out at the fresh roots farm come spring